Hello everybody and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today I have a, I believe it's a 9 by 12 sheet of Canson Hot Press 100% cotton watercolor paper. And I've been carrying around uh, the Platinum Carbon Ink, the Fountain Pen Ink. And I have that in a Noodler's Brush Pen. And a Fountain Pen Himalaya or Himalaya um, fountain pen. And I've been using it to kind of just uh, sketch whenever I get a free chance or, um, you know, work on landscape stuff. And in this case, work on Japanese uh, or Chinese blossoms. So this one I mainly did with the brush pen and I did kind of side strokes to get this dry brush texture. It's, um, fairly easy to do with the brush pen. It um, just requires a little bit of finesse, but it's very easy to achieve. And then for the most part, all of these blossoms were done with the brush pen itself. I believe this one was done with um, the fountain pen and some of the stamens. So what I wanted to do with this was kind of watercolor over it. And looking at it, I was kind of thinking not so much color it in in the sense of um, making it seem illustrative. I was thinking maybe trying to watercolor over it and getting an antique type feel. Almost as if we had done a tea wash on the paper and um, did our ink drawing on top of that. So that's kind of the goal for this one. I have a few other uh, sketches. I think they're all landscape that I'm going to wash over today. And uh, yeah, we'll just try to get a variety of uh, effects to take place. So uh, with this, uh, you can see my palette on the side. Yep. I have my raw sienna. I think I'm going to go raw sienna, ultramarine, with that kind of muted gray that will take place. And I'm wondering if, just for the most part, yeah, there we go. Now this is hot press paper, and I am not adept at painting on it. Um, one of my friends, Colin Woodward, if you're in the Ron Ranson Facebook group, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, I'm not sure if you post another group as well. He's from um, the United Kingdom, I believe. He does some really um, beautiful work on hot press recently. And he's very uh, kind of a, a tighter painter. And he's been trying to loosen up some. So I was really amazed that he was able to paint the way he did on hot press paper. I would love to get him to start doing videos. And those of you guys watching, I encourage you all to film yourself painting. And, you know, just, uh, you know, talking about what you're doing, your approach, and how um, you're playing around. It'd be fun. Even time lapses, you just set up a little uh, camera and film a time lapse. So I'm just going back and forth between a mixture of the raw sienna and the ultramarine. Part of me is thinking that I should leave some of these white spaces. Maybe I should have put some um, resist over the blossoms themselves in some spots. But I'm just going to go over this. I'm going to feed it in. We're not really going to go much further, I don't think. This is kind of, like I said, kind of just almost antiquing the paper with the raw sienna and ultramarine. Almost getting like a ambient feeling to it. 
Uh, mat wise, it'll go here, 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 here would be the openings. If it was to be displayed underneath. This platinum carbon ink has been fantastic for sketching and water washing over it. Other alternatives were the, the Noodler's inks, which I've been playing around with and I want to do some more videos of those. By the way, I'm currently quarantined from work. I got the message last night um, being exposed to a positive person at work. So this is like my third or fourth quarantine, but I'll be putting up a lot of videos in the next few days because all I can really do now is just kind of stay at home and paint. I could also skateboard and whatnot, but um, it's of course raining. And if I wind up becoming symptomatic, probably not best to skateboard when um, having breathing issues. So fingers crossed that everything works out. Let me see how it looks. Grab a little bit of water. I want to not have those harsh edges. I want to see if I can kind of get a smoother gradient with it. So I grabbed a little dip of water. Kind of push it around a little bit more. By the way, um, I want to thank you all for liking and subscribing and uh, watching these videos. Um, I feel like the channel's been growing and I've been, you know, trying different things. And so far the feedback's been like over, overall positive and it's nice to, you know, check my phone or whatever and seeing that there's, there's comments on a painting or people asking questions or, um, you know, people just saying, you know, thank you. So, I really appreciate that and, you know, keep the comments coming, please. Um, it really makes my day. And, you know, when people ask, oh, do you have a video on this? Do you have a video on that? I appreciate that too, because sometimes I do or sometimes I don't and I can make a video from it. Or I can point you in the direction of an artist who would have something like that. So let's leave this here. I feel like I might have just pushed it to the point of a little bit too much. Let's do a dry off and we'll see how everything looks. Great. So I just did a dry off and grabbed a little notepad. I'm going to write down that we need to do a two color experiment. Two color experiment in ultramarine and um, raw sienna. I think a full landscape using those two colors would be quite beneficial, a good um, exploration. So I think at this point I'm going to take a little bit of um, watercolor and just accentuate some of these blossoms just so we can see. Maybe this is the right direction, maybe not. Um, down below in the comments, let me know what you think if you would have stayed at this point or if you would have gone further. Also, the mixture that we use to kind of get that antique feel. What type of alternatives would you maybe have tried right then and there? Uh, I have some Quinn Rose on the palette inside, and I'm taking a number four rigger. And. accentuate some of these blossoms. I don't usually use Quin Rose in my normal palette. Um, it is a very beautiful color. Um, I usually use it just uh, in that two color palette, Quin Rose and uh, Thalo Green. 
but I think it lends itself to this style of painting. I'm going to try not to fill these in completely, almost to kind of get little highlights on them. I could take the squirrel mop. I think you'd be able to get in enough just to kind of accentuate some spots. I do feel like adding color makes it more illustrative, which might be a, an aesthetic that you like. It may be something that you uh, don't like. But that's for uh, playing around. With the initial blossom that I had done, if you use a Chinese ink or something like that in a brush, you can get some more variation in the tone of it. And I think um, between the ink and the wash of the raw sienna and ultramarine, it would be very good standing alone, getting its variation there. Try to get some areas that are a little bit lighter in tonal value. Get some variation taking place. And of course, we could splatter if we want. And I think we will in the interest of experimentation. Now we'll dry it off. We'll put a mat over it. We'll see what orientation looks nice because uh, the good thing about this, before you sign your name on it, you can turn it around and see what looks best. So let me pause this and dry it. All right, just finished drying. Let's put our mat on top. This is the original orientation that I was leaning towards. And I have a feeling that it might stay in this fashion. Unfortunately, my camera's a little too zoomed in. But I could go around and put it this way and then sign the name if I wanted to. Or even that way, whatever way looks good. So I'm going to end the video here. I hope you enjoyed and I will talk to you soon. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment. I have a Patreon account down below if you'd like to support this channel and I'll talk to you soon. Have a good day.